coil wine, coil wine, coil wine. Oh, I just ripped it. Hey, what's up? John Shred here. Today we are looking at the Asus Tough. 4090. This is the fourth card in the series of reviews. If you want to check out any of my other 4090 reviews, please check them out. I'm also getting into 4080s shortly, uh, but I was able to get this 4090, so stay tuned. Let's unbox it together, see what it's about. I will put it in my new O11 DXL system I just built to kind of see how it feels in size, and uh, we'll get some benchmarks. All right, welcome back. Uh, this card was, was a surprise for me. Um, I didn't expect, I was kinda, I thought the 4090s had run out of stock for a while. If you're, if you're wondering how I'm getting these cards, I mean, my channel is too small. I'm, I'm not sponsors yet. Um, companies aren't sending me these cards. I'm doing like everyone else and hunting for these cards online. I actually did a video here about how I get them. And I mean, I'm buying them myself and, and then I find someone and, and resell them at retail price. For me, it's just all about being able to review them and create content for you. And I get to play with a pretty cool card uh, when they first come out, which is neat. So this one here was actually open box from Newegg.ca, uh, which uh, I haven't bought a brand new or, or uh, a 4090 open box. Uh, so I was a little bit concerned when I opened it that it, it might be uh, a bag of rocks or something. Um, but, so I have taken a peek and it is a solid card, but let me get it open here. The box is a little different actually. You see how the corners are uh, are cut off? It's just, I don't know, something different. I've, I've reviewed the 38, oh, I just ripped it. Ooh. Uh, 3080 and 3090. I actually have a comparison video here of those two cards. They are identical other than the uh, NV Link port. Uh, I hope I can resell that. Um, okay, uh, let's open this guy up. Not as fancy as, as a Strix, uh, but oh. uh, inside we have our four pin adapter. All 49 is a four pin, uh, a tough like cable management and uh, a buck. Cool. All right, toss this guy. All right, let's see what we have here. Ta da! Okay. Uh, I mean, it looks very uh, strong to their brand. You know, it has definitely the tough, the tough logo here. Uh, very square feeling. Uh, the back's pretty neat. It's kind of just all open. It almost has this mesh-ish grill, but there's there's like a space. You see how much gap there is there? Um, it's odd. It's almost like they just knew the card had to go this big and then they just decided to uh, BIOS performance and quiet, uh, which is pretty standard on Asus uh, cards. Uh, yeah, I mean, it looks pretty cool. It's just tough gaming all over. It has a little like mission with some coordinates on it. Yeah, I can see that right there. Right there. Uh, yeah, this is all very similar to their tough line and their brand. Um, now, as I mentioned, I get these cards and, and I end up reselling them. They, uh, you know, they're very expensive, so I can't keep too many of them, but I do have a couple that I'm still waiting to review. So here's a, here's a 4080 Strix, just to keep it inside the, um, the Asus family. And they are almost identical in size. The 4080 is actually, I hope you can see that up there, slightly bigger by maybe a half inch longer. Height wise the same, thickness the same. Um, so interesting. If you can't fit a 4080 Strix, then maybe 
a tough 3090 could work for you. Here, let's compare it to, uh, okay, here's uh, my old EVGA 3090 Ti, and it is much, much smaller. Thickness-wise, it's about the same, but this guy has a solid two inches on, on the end here. Um, so that's interesting. Now, as I mentioned before, EVGA cards are, are generally shorter, uh, which is cool. Um, here you can see behind me, there's a 4080. Let me see if I can get this uh, 4080 FE. Even just the, got some thermal paste on here. Um, it's about an inch and a half longer. Thickness is a little bit thicker on the tough. So I'm actually surprised it's this big. I wish I had. I'm still uh, trying to track down a, um, a 4090 Strix. It'd be really cool to do it, do a head to head. So, I mean, other than that, it's a pretty, if you've seen any of the other reviews, uh, 12 pin connector on top uh, with your, 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 you know, four eight pin uh, adapter. I don't know, not a whole much, a lot else to say. Let's uh, let's grab uh, the PC. We'll, we'll take out that 4080 FE. We'll put this guy in it. Uh, I'll boot it up just so you guys can see the lights. And then and then we'll check out some, some performance. So uh, give me a second, I'll, I'll slap it in there and see how well it fits. I'm sure that it'll, it'll be fine. Um, and then I will compare it to the other 4090s uh, that I have. I've done the, the, the FE, the Supreme X, and the Liquid X uh, to see how well this guy performs uh, and, and the temps. So, all right, let me, uh, let me slap it in. To take out the 4080s, use a 3 8 pin power connector. So I'll get rid of that. Okay, you can go back here. Interesting, the 4080 Strix is a three card slot. I mean, they're all three to four card like thicknesses, but the actual bracket here is it still only a two, a two card bracket, uh, which is a-okay. I can put my bracket piece in there. Screw this guy in. This is completely cosmetic, just so you don't have a gap in the back of your system. Cool. Don't recommend doing that one-handed. Okay. Helps if you take this off. Okay. Let's give it a couple screws. Okay, one's enough, we're good. Oh, three pin adapter back here. Four pin ad adapter, sorry, I mean 12 pin, three eight pin connector. Uh, let's get that in. You heard the click, clicking is good. Make sure it clicks, push it in all the way. I just um, I just installed this EK Elite all-in-one uh, 360 mil cooler. Uh, if you want to check out the review, hit it up there. Uh, they gave me a nice like EK kind of tie, much like the tie that was that was in there. I'm going to use it right now. This is just a gong show with these these cables here. I'm going to see if I can just tie them all together. Let's see if it's long enough. Yeah, there we go. Just to organize it 
a little bit. Okay. Hmm. So, I mean, nothing crazy. You're kind of hiding here. Ah, there we go. Uh, a bit of a tough logo. Uh, that's it. Literally this little strip here and, and, and the tough logo is, is what you get. It's some surprise that it's even G-Force logo or kind of the G-Force word here. It doesn't like up. So, I mean, as, as we thought, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't do a whole lot of RGB. Uh, when you're looking for a tough card, that's usually not what you have in mind. Man, this thing's heavy. Okay. Um, okay. Let me, uh, let me go to this downstairs, run some benchmarks against it, uh, and I will come back and post those. And then I'll come back with, uh, with my conclusion to better understand why you might buy one of the tough cards versus anything else. Um, in the 4090 range. So, okay, stay tuned. And I'm back. Now, before we take a look at the benchmarks, the first thing I noticed when I got this card fired up was that there was some coil wine. I tried to capture it here in this video. Not, not sure if you, you can really hear it. It's not super noticeable. And I mean, if you had the side of your case on, you probably wouldn't notice. I mean, it is just a noise thing. It doesn't affect performance. So let's take a peek at the benchmarks. So when comparing the tough 4090 against the other 4090s I've reviewed, it ended up at the bottom of the list, but, but not by much. We're talking one to 2% difference. Now this is the tough OC version. Uh, we'll get into that kind of the difference uh, when we talk cost. But the benchmark surprised me a little bit. I mean, I, I expected, I mean, the whole tough marketing is military grade, tough, sturdy, um, but I didn't think it would uh, affect the performance. So, I mean, is it just a marketing thing? I mean, they, they talk about their capacitors, military grade capacitors, having over 20,000 hours uh, tested at 105 Celsius. I mean, that's, that's pretty good. And I mean, it makes you wonder, what are the other ones being tested at? I often wonder from ASUS, if the people that build the tough model versus the Strix model are two completely separate departments or do they share minds? ASUS, if you're watching this, please let us know. Now, if you're digging this video, please leave a thumbs up. I'm still a pretty small channel. I'm doing my best to try and gain as many followers as possible. Okay, what about overclocking? Eh, not a whole lot to say here. It overclocked just as well as the other cards, but because it started lower, it, it ended just as low. Uh, that one, one to two percent slower than the other cards. Mm. The uh, settings I use, I ended up going plus 230 megahertz on the core, bringing it up to 2,985 megahertz, so just really close to that 3,000 megahertz. Uh, and then on the VRAM, I did plus 1,700, which seemed like a lot, but in the end, it only brought it up to 12,200 megahertz, where other cards were doing 12,700 megahertz, 12,900 megahertz. So still overall, still lower on, on the VRAM overclocking. Now the power draw on this card is limited to 450 watts uh, by default, the software um, limitation, but you do have the ability to crank it up to 600 watts, unlike the MSI cards. Now, if you haven't seen my video about connecting either three or four eight pin power connectors, check it out here. I used this card to do a test and confirmed based on some information that I received from uh, in the comments of my video saying that if you only plug in three, it will limit the card to 450 watts 
and they were 100% right. Now, you do see a 5 to 10% performance hit when only running three 8 pin power connectors. So, up to you. When talking pricing, the Asus Tough OC4090 comes in at $1799. Now, versus the non OC version comes in at $1599, which is the same price as the 4090's Founders Edition. Now, I haven't been able to compare the Tough OC versus the Tough non OC to understand how much extra juice, how much extra OC potential do you have for the extra 200 bucks. In my mind, if the OC version is already underperforming, uh, I don't know how bad the, the normal version is, or maybe I just got a bad card. Now the tough line is Asus's mid-tier GPU line. I mean, back in the 3000 series, it was very common to use an Asus Tough 3080 uh, for mining. Uh, the VRAM modules on them are great, as always, Asus does an amazing job there, along with the thermals to cool them. And this whole sturdy idea was that it could just mine all day long, no big deal. At the same time, it only used two 8-pin power connectors. And if you've ever done a lot of mining, you know it's, it's tough to come by these 8-pin power connectors, so that was a big bonus for these tough cards. Now when it comes to the 4000 series, uh, I don't see the the advantage yet, and, and maybe it'll, it'll come out in the market as why you'd want one of these. We'll get to that in, in the conclusion. But if if you're comparing it to a Strix 4090, uh, which is two thousand dollars USD, it's a four hundred dollar difference. I mean, what are you getting? Yes, it probably will perform a little bit better, but we're only talking three to six percent difference from what I can see from the other high top tier cards. So really it comes down to do you want the Strix bling uh, with the lighting and kind of that big statement piece which is up to you. Thermals were absolutely top notch uh, which I'm not surprised. It's a pretty bulky BC card. Uh, the GPU didn't go over 67 degrees Celsius on all the tests and the VRAM was 62 degrees Celsius. Awesome. Two thumbs up Asus. Now the lighting on these tough cards is, is pretty standard and I think that's part and part with their brand. Uh, limited RGB with a simple tough logo. Now it was interesting that I uninstalled the Asus Create Creator software on my system while testing this card and I actually lost the RGB on the tough logo. As soon as I reinstalled the software again, bam, it, it came back up. But it, is a little junky that you have to have the Asus Creator software to get the RGB to work. Oh, and I mentioned this in the Strix 4080 review that at the 12 volt power connector, there is this red light that turns on when you turn, uh, essentially when you power down your computer but haven't unplugged the power connector, a red light turns on. I still don't know why that's there or, or the purpose of the red light. Uh, I do hate red lights uh, just because I think something's wrong. If anyone has any more information about why that red light's there or, or what it means, please leave a comment down below. So what's my overall thought on this card? Well, it's exactly what I kind of anticipated minus the coil wine, but I mean, it, it's, not as good as the top tier, but it's amazing. It definitely outperforms any 4080. Uh, it's a solid 4090 contender. Would I get one of these versus a 4090 FE? I mean, if you get the non-OC version, they're, they're the same price. So I probably would. Uh, I do like AC products. It is, it is nice. It still does have the big uh, tough RGB logo on it versus the 4090 FE, which is, which is pretty plain Jane. Let me know what you, you're thinking. And if you're considering buying a tough 4090, um, is the thought of getting a car with coil wine uh, an issue? I mean, does that even bother you? Leave a comment down below. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe for more information and stay tuned for the next one.